Praise them. Hallelujah. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having a fantastic day out there. It's uh, March 6th, and uh, we're coming. It's called Love Others, right? Um, daily devotional, the upper room. I'm um, bringing it to you on this perfect day, at this perfect time, to launch it out there. And someone will see it in the perfect day, perfect time they were meant to be. So I know I'm meant to be here doing it um, right now at this very moment. And it's called Love Others. Look, people won't love you unless you had the love of God flowing through you. Only God supplies love from heaven. Here in this earth is Lucifer and all his hatred is what they promote in uh, Satan's kingdom here. Lucifer, he promotes um, lies, fantasy, and hate. God is truth reality and love praise the lord only god can supply love to you to others so when people ain't loving you back and they they just don't know how to love you they don't have no supply like if i wanted to offer you a sandwich and i'm out of bread well i can't give you a sandwich because i'm out of bread well and you know i can't give you nothing so they can't give you nothing they're out of love they don't have love they they're not supplied with love you know walmart has a stock full of uh shelves full of bread you go down there and get as much bread as you want when you got god within you you have the Holy Spirit, an unlimited supply of love. Just like if you go to Walmart right now, you can have unlimited supply of bread down there from any kind, uh, pumpernickel to white bread to wheat bread, etc. Hot dog rolls, hamburger buns, right? <laughs> Whatever, right? Praise the Lord. But you see what I'm saying? Only God can su um, supply love. And we need to keep that in mind because I forgave a man who beat and bullied my daughter. I didn't have no love, but God supplied love. He supplied forgiveness. How? Through the fruit of the Spirit, His very Spirit living within me to this man. And simply, He did not know any better. Father, forgive them, for they not know what they do, Jesus said on the cross when He was beaten and nailed there. He told them, forgive them. Forgive people who come against you and still show the love. Behave like a Christian. Follow that perfect example Jesus followed or left for us to follow. His first In the book of 1 Peter 2.21 says, Jesus came and left a perfect example for all men to follow. Not some, but all of us to follow. Jesus' example. If it don't line up with Him and His teachings, it's no good. Praise the Lord. And, uh... We must just show love no matter what. Not to get something, not to look good. Do it to do it. The agape love, right? But we're going to be spreading brotherly love to people. And this is what this uh, scripture lines up with. Romans chapter 12, verses uh, 9 through uh, 18 is what I'm going to be reading. It's the heading heading into these verses in, in chapter 12 is uh, behave like a Christian. And the only way you can behave like a Christian, totally honest with you, is walking in the Spirit. The closer we get to God... The more we fill up on His Spirit, the more His characteristics flow through us because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He lent me forgiveness. He lent me love and compassion for this man and all the people, the mom and all the neighbors and all the family members that knew what was going on. Still to this day, not one person has come up. But I forgive them because I behave like a Christian. I'm not going to reward evil with evil. Right? They simply didn't know any better. They don't have God's wisdom, a spirit of fearlessness. They were afraid. And this guy he was like a bully, this, that, and the other. But, you know... Um, we just got to focus on love, 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 guys, okay? And that's what we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and read read this uh, scriptures here in a moment. But whoever you come across today as a Christian, I want you to show love and compassion to them. I don't care if they've stole money from you, borrowed money, didn't pay it back, um, you know, called you a name behind your back or falsely accused you like I forgave this man Mario and all the people here. I've had an opportunity to walk up on all of them and say, Man, you know, how dare you kind of, you know what I'm saying? But I give you forgiveness, man, because you didn't know any better. You didn't know God's fearless spirit. You didn't know right from wrong. You accepted evil for good and the lie for truth. Or they knew the truth and went with the lie because they were all in cahoots. The world loves its own. Not one of them. They love Jesus or they would have came forward with the strength and authority of God in them, you know. But they didn't. But still, I behave like a Christian with all of them till this day. I feel sorry for people who don't come forward. Forget me. For a little girl. Who lost her dad, who who had watched her mom get abused, and it's a touchy, you know, a touchy thing with me today. It hurts because I'm a dad and I love my daughter, and that, and as far as it goes, but all the rest of it, it's been gone. I forgot, you know, everybody there. I still pray for them, pray for the truth to be known, but that's all in God's will and His timing. But until that day. I will continue to show love to these people. I refuse to be like this world and reward evil with evil because I was coming hardcore with revenge, but I accepted God because no one, everyone was believing the lie from Lucifer, the lie from hell, but no, God only knew the truth, so why am I going to worry about all them? I'm going to go to God. That's how my relationship grew with God. He put me through something to be who I am today to help other people along the way, guys, to be a good teacher of God's word. I ain't the best, and I don't know all the verses, but one thing I do, God, 
is loyalty to God and a lot of excitement for God. Jesus died for me, and I tremendously will live my life out for him the best I can. Yeah, I stumble and I fall down. I get back up. I, I dust myself off. I pick my cross back up and we're pushing on for the Lord. Praise God. And I'm not perfect, man, but I refuse to lose because I got God Almighty who's gave me victory over death. I refuse to lose with that kind of power, wisdom, strength, and love that I share with everybody because this world out here, lots of people walking around in darkness that don't see love in their day or in their whole life. But guess what? Holy Spirit's flying through me right now. Hallelujah. I'm going to show them love. I'm going to give them the love of Jesus that's in me to them. They don't have it. They got the hatred of Lucifer because they're stuck in the flesh and a generational curse. So don't look down on them. Look up to, just look at them and give them love. Don't look down though. You're not better than nobody. Neither am I. Jesus was better than all of us and he never acted like that. We must show humility to people is what the um, worship was about the other day. The main message was humility. You know, be humble. Be humble and treat people right with respect and love. But if you don't have it, Walmart don't have bread. I can't go there and buy none, right? Unless they're stocked. Then I got plenty. So God's got plenty of love. Share it with the world, guys. This is what we need to do to make this world, this darker world, a brighter and better place. We don't want to add to the darkness with hatred and gossip and all the nonsense, right? We want to add to the light and make it a better and brighter place, just like Jesus. The, the sun is the physical light of the world. Jesus is the spiritual light of the world that lights up people when they're depressed, lonely, feeling full of anxiety and fear. This is what God gives me through the fruit of the Spirit. And we're going to let that love of Jesus flow from my heart where he lives to their heart, guys. And however they take it, it's okay. You planted the seed or watered it, and they will always remember that act of kindness. I don't always remember what people said, right, in my past, but I always, always remembered how they made me feel. And I want to make everybody feel loved in this world. That's what I want to, because people looked down on me for a lie from hell and hated me and, and shunned me, a whole church full of people, um, you know, with this... Um, I won't name the church. Uh, it's just a place of worship, you know, and um, we are the church wherever we go. And we got Jesus Christ as the head. We're the body. And wherever we are, He is, which means calling the Holy Spirit. And I give love to these people that didn't help me and my poor little daughter. And uh, it's okay. It's it's all right because she knows the Lord. I know the Lord. We're going to be together forever in heaven. And it doesn't even matter anymore. Trusting in God's plan. The cross was not just a sacrifice vice where jesus was hung on but it stands for t a big truth man and timing god's truth and his timing will always prevail and sit back and wait and until then let's spread the love and the gospel of jesus christ hallelujah all right guys here we go behave like a christian verse 9 says love me love uh, let love be without hypocrisy abhor what is evil cling to what is good be kindly and affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another Put God first, other people second, and you last. Because when we finish last, we finish first in our almighty creator's eyes, our dear father's eyes. And that's where the win is. That's where the victory's at, y'all. Hallelujah. The V-I-C-T-O-R-Y victory. God first, other people second, no matter who they are. Strangers, family, friends. And you last. You finish first in God's eyes. Jesus showed us how to do this. First Peter 2.21. How to live life and how to love even your enemies from a cross. I said the same words to that guy Mario in Walmart, man. Like four years ago now. First Friday of August was, uh, I forgive you, man. For you didn't know what you were doing. You, you did not know what you did. You know, like Jesus said on the cross, I actually said that to him, the Holy Spirit gave me some amazing words that day. It was incredible to get that guilt, or not guilt, but that anger, right, off of my chest, man, because I wanted to hurt this guy bad. And uh, I don't care how big he was, I was going to bring him down to size for what he put me and my daughter through. But guess what? I showed the love of Jesus Christ to him that day. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, for lending me your forgiveness and love for all these people that didn't help me and my daughter. They all knew who they are, and I know who they are. I can't forget, but I forgive, and I show them love. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, here we go. Verse 11. Not um, lagging in diligence, reverent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continue, continue, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of saints, giving hospitality. Bless to those who persecute bless those who persecute you and and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Reply 
repay, I'm sorry guys, not reply, but repay no one, <clears throat> excuse me, with evil for evil. Have regard for things in the sight of all men. Last verse here, 18, it is possible as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Praise the Lord, right? All men, all women, all people, right? Praise the Lord. Um, guys, right here it says in verse 11, um, not lagging and diligent, reverent in spirit, and serving the Lord, right? We serve the Lord by walking in the Spirit because now we allow Him. When we invite the Spirit, He works through us. It says in diligence, though, in verse 11, Christians should not offer their services half-heartedly or lazy manner. Instead, Paul encourages the Romans to serve eagerly in, in earnest. It means I give my all on a basketball court. I gave my all at the cabinet company I used to work at as a kid. I gave my all and all for everybody. We got to do that same excitement focus and energy for the lord pick up your cross on a daily basis and let's get moving and let god work through you because everybody in your life in your circle you'll meet today god's got a message for them they might need help or a message and you can do it if you invite the holy spirit in do not serve god half-heartedly give it all y'all hallelujah praise the lord hospitality means love of strangers the primary reference is to housing travelers right if someone needs some help outside they break down say hey look you know, these days are dangerous, you know, but God will put it upon you, though all forms of hospitality um, are included. Um, you know, helping them out with a meal, some food for or money for a hotel instead of bringing them into your home, whatever. Just help people. As we dedicate our size, our, these are study notes, by the way, as we dedicate ourselves meeting the needs of our fellow believers, we have opportunities to serve strangers. It's easy to serve your brother and sister in Christ, but it's hard to want to do for a stranger. That stranger could be God. Remember that. You could be entertaining an angel or God himself at that very moment. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind when you go, I ain't giving no money to that guy, man. He's dirty. Oh, he looks like a drug addict. Oh, he's a, you know, he looks like a bum, an alcoholic, a meth head. Stop. Hold up. Show them love and compassion. If they could be doing better, they would be doing better. So help them out. Hallelujah. Lord knows I got enough. You got enough. Praise the Lord. And thus, witness to them about the love of Christ. Every time I do a favor or act of kindness for anybody, you know what I say? And they go, wow, that's so kind to you. People don't do that. I said, that's the joy. That's the love of Jesus in my heart to you, my friend. That's what my how I witness to people. Because now they're like, wow, this guy's a Christian and he helped me. He's a follower of Jesus. Jesus lives within him and he's working through him. Praise the Lord. See, we're lights, man. Jesus lives in us, man. When they see us, they see God in our acts of kindness and love and our strength and our focus and our diligence and um, self-control. And the list goes on and on, guys, okay? Praise the Lord. And um, let's see here. Let's go down to 18. The believer's aim should be to live peaceably, like I do in this community where I want to, you know, wanted to hurt people. I'll say wanted to hurt people because now I just feel sorry for them that they don't lo love a little girl or innocent person, dad like me, to step up. I live peaceably among them because they simply don't know better. I wouldn't harm a little kid. I wouldn't yell at a little kid. You know why? I never yelled at none of my kids. They didn't know any better. How can I yell at them when they don't know any better? How can I be angry at someone if they don't know any better? That apply with my daughters. That applies with all these people here. They don't know any better. For Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Like a little kid. I never yelled at any of my kids. Always treated them with love and respect and taught them lessons, man. You know, in a great way, as a dad should. And that's what we should do. Gentle in love, even to these people who didn't help me and my daughter. That's how I live my life, because I choose to let the Holy Spirit flow through me. Guys, here we go. Um, we're going to get this now. When my husband was diagnosed with cancer last October, and this comes from Christy Bass Adams, I suddenly was more aware of my life's... Um, uh, finite uh, timeline, right? And this is the upper room where the world meets to pray as one, y'all. Please forgive me. Got a little emotional there, you know, talking about these people. <sighs> Lift it up to God. Now we're going to continue. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. Get this flesh out of the way. Get Daryl out of the way. Less of me, more of you. Let's get it, guys. We're going to start over. But Romans chapter 12, verse 10 says, Love each other with, like the members of your own family. Be the best at showing honor to each other that comes out of the ceb bible praise the lord now it says when my my husband was diagnosed with cancer last october i suddenly i was suddenly more aware of life's finite uh, finite finite timeline my husband's next breath w wasn't guaranteed but then neither was mine praise the lord she says wow amazing man we're not promised five minutes from now five seconds from now five years 
not even five seconds. Wow, think about that for a minute. So everyone in your life, make sure you tell them how much you love them. Anyone you meet, leave that lasting impression on them, of the love of Christ in you to them. Over the years, I've heard const, uh, countless stories from friends and family who wish their last words were, uh, last words with a loved one had been different. A lot of people argue with their family members or friends before they passed away or not even called them or seen them in years. And you always regret that. You know, it's something I will never regret because I tell everybody, I got love for you. I love you. When I say that, I mean that. I want you to know I love you. We're all human beings trying to make it through this world. And with God, He don't make things easy. He makes them possible. Praise the Lord. Now it says, some parted in disagreement, frustrations, or silence. Just like I mentioned those three examples of losing touch or, you know, argument or whatever. And then you go to call them and, oh, they were in a car wreck or they committed suicide or this, that, and the other. Now, others spent a lifetime waiting to hear I love you from, from a mother, a father, grandpa, grandma, or sibling. Um, with my husband's cancer diagnosis, I felt compel compelled to start saying I love you. Not only to my family, but also to my friends. That I, now, I am that friend who moves in first for the hug and I say I love you. That's me. I'm always going in for the hug. Some people are like, get away. COVID-19's around. I'm like, get out of here with that. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, man. You must not be in your word or you'd be fearless and you would hug and high five for Jesus like I do. People are so standoffish now because they're more in the world and not in their word. The world promotes fear. God's word promotes fearlessness and courage and reminds you, being filled on God's Holy Spirit, that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that your last breath... <gasps> Here is your first breath in heaven forever. Hallelujah. We're here for sacrifice. And as we do the Lord's work, nothing, no virus, no parachute not opening at 10,000 feet. Poof. They walk away because it wasn't your time. God's got that time wrote down. Perfect day and time. You're going to go home. We have a purpose here. We're here to service the Lord, showing, spreading his love. No matter what we go through, God's got his hands of protection around us while we do this. But back to the program, back to the lesson here, love others, right? And it says, now I'm that friend who moves in first for the hug. I say I love you as I embrace them. Because a lot of people don't have that in them, man. And when you do it, man, it's contagious, man. And I yell it across the parking lot. Hey, I love you. <laughs> I do that too, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm screaming for the Lord, right? People scream so much, uh, you know, profanity and negativity. I'm praising the Lord. I'm screaming love. I'm screaming all day for my Lord and Savior. Now it says, um, I say it on the phone. I type it in text. I never want my family and friends to wonder how I feel. Every chance I get, I will say to them, I love you. Hey, guys, whoever's watching this, I love you. Whether you're a friend or a stranger or a family member, I love you with the love of Jesus in my heart. You know why? Because Jesus showed me how to love everyone. Because we're all human beings. We all have needs. And we all need to be loved. We're human. It's human nature to want to feel loved. And I love you out there. If you ever need help, a hand, this, that, and the other, whatever way I can help, I will help you. I will pray to all my almighty God. You know, you seek the prayer of a righteous man. I'm not perfect, but I'm righteous in Jesus Christ. And I'm always trying to keep my plate clean of sin so I can be the righteous guy you can come to and pray. I'll pray for you. I'll, God's listening to my prayers because I'm clean from sin. Not perfect, but when I sin, I clean my plate. And then I pray. Repent and then pray. I'm very aware of that. You should be aware of that too. Seek the, the prayer of a righteous person who's actually not just talking about God's word, is living it out. And that's who you want to seek for prayer to get action done. Seek a sinner's prayer, a Christian who's sinning. God's not hearing that prayer till they repent. And they don't really do They just go right into prayer. I used to do it. I know lots of other people are doing it because we're all the same. We're all in this human condition. Every chance I get now, I say I love you. More important, I tell my friends and family that God loves them. And when I do that, they hate me for that. But what? Satan, the very one that you, Jesus, that you reject, who saves your life and loves you, you reject him, but yet you embrace Lucifer, the one who hates you and is killing you and stealing and destroying your family, your life, your friendship, your mind, your soul, your body with addiction and hatred and everything. Embrace Jesus because he loves you. Hallelujah. More important, I tell my friends and family God loves them. I speak of God's mercy and grace. Grace stands for God's redemption at Christ's expense. Through Jesus' blood, it was an atonement for our sins. Um, 
they needed to be paid. Jesus paid it in full with his blood. Not a sack of money, but um, his blood. His precious blood covers us because he's holy. Now God, don't look at us as sinner Daryl. He just sees Jesus' blood on me. He sees his son when he sees me because he lives within me. Hallelujah. I speak of God's mercy and grace to everyone, guys. No matter what you've done from stealing a piece of gum to murder, hurting animals, children, um, you know, all these horrible crimes that everybody looks upon and goes, oh, that's unforgivable. No, if Adolf Hitler would have asked for forgiveness, God would have forgave him. He's, un he's just loving and forgiving. Praise the Lord. True story, man. Scripture says that God would have forgave even Adolf Hitler after he hurt all those poor Jewish people. True story. Hallelujah. I remind them that God is always good. And that God is the reason that I end my conversations with, I love you. Praise the Lord. I'm simply going to end this video with, I love you. And that's going to leave it at that, guys. I love you. Jesus loves you. I love you. That's the way it's always going to be. Why do you want to live in the world of darkness? Surround yourself with people with hateful hearts and that speak bad to you, falsely accuse you of things that they're guilty of. Why would you want to be a part of that? Right? We don't want to be a part of making the world darker. We want to make it brighter with the love of Jesus Christ that flows through our hearts to them. Whether they receive it or not, you still did what's right in God's eyes. And that's all that matters. I'm on assignment for the Lord. My job is to spread the gospel with all my heart, strength, and energy. I'm, I'm, I'm on fire for the Lord. I'm hot. I'm not war lukewarm or cold. I'm hot for the Lord because Jesus was hot for me, man. He gave everything for me and I will give everything I got to, to serve him the best way I can. Yeah, I'm a sinner and I might stumble and fall, but I'll get back up and I'll repent and pick that cross up and I'll be pushing forward to the Lord to spread that love, that Jesus love, baby. Hallelujah. Let's spread it um, like peanut butter, baby, real thick. <laughs> Let's spread God's love and the gospel of Christ like gossip. Gossip gets spread everywhere, and it's harmful and hurtful. Let's spread Jesus' love everywhere, and let's bring light in this dark world. <sighs> Praise the Lord. <sighs> Peace be with you. I love you. And if the good Lord takes me home before you, I will leave the lights on like Motel 6. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, y'all. I love you. Get out there and spread that Jesus love. Hallelujah. Woo!